The next question is uh, directed to Father Rodriguez. If Pope John the Twenty Third disobeyed Our Lady, uh, presumably by not revealing the third secret, how is it possible that he was canonized a saint? Could he now intercede for us? And I guess uh, similarly, that similar question could be asked about all the post-conciliar popes. Unfortunately, with a lot of the recent canonizations that have taken place, especially the canonizations that have taken place under the pontificate of <clears throat> Francis. So, um, and again, like especially also Pope Paul VI, I kind of get confused now, and uh, I'm not even sure when the uh, when Pope John Paul II was canonized. But um, most definitely, there um, are serious problems with those canonizations. Just just beginning with the fact that the whole canonization process has um, also been altered. In other words, what the how the Catholic Church has. I mean, the very rigorous investigation that they've done in order to, you know, proclaim someone a saint, um, that that has been changed. I can't tell you exactly who the cardinals are, or, or uh, I don't remember the exact names, but you even have high, I don't know, maybe Father Motzner <clears throat> or, 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 or Chris will add to this, but you, you have also Vatican officials that they've even come out, and again, especially in the pontificate of Francis II, where they've actually basically even changed the understanding you could say of what a saint is they, they've said things like you know you know because they're canonized it doesn't mean now that they have to you know whatever live let's say uh um an exemplary life it, basically it's been a change because of that uh i would say i don't i, I do think there is a serious doubt whether um you know these canonizations are at the level of uh, previous canonizations by the same token I don't really think that should, should should surprise us that much I mean the gravity of the crisis in the church today is very very serious and I think our big problem is that there are far too many Catholics that they continue to go about their business as if everything in the church is running as usual and so okay if so if a canonization is made well then it, it must be a canonization and you know, if you know the bishop says something, if the bishop cancels uh, masses because of the scandemic, then well, then we can't go. Then then we shouldn't go to mass. I mean, it goes on and on and on and on. It is very unfortunate, and this is why we do have such a grave crisis in the church. Because I think the next question will be, Father, well, then can we trust anything that's coming coming our way from the hierarchy? And I mean. Sadly, I would say it is a legitimate question. I would say it's kind of hard to trust anything. Um, but I do think that's the reality. I think that's why it's so important. I mean, people who don't think the Fatima message is urgent, I would say if you don't think that's telling you that it's urgent that we, that we uh, uh, get help from heaven here for our beloved church, um, what, what signs do you need? But also, all the more reason to uh, pray a lot for uh, our hierarchy, you know, for our priests, for our bishops, for Francis, to, and, and to um, keep doing your very best to, to learn your faith well, so that you can, uh, you know, recognize that a lot of the things that are being done right now in, in, in the church, sadly, are not being done correctly. Uh, Chris, uh, Father, if you could add. With the uh, canonization process, we have a, a conundrum and it involves the process, that, because canonization wasn't always a papal function. There were local canonizations by bishops, a lot of those were suspect. Uh, I think it was around the 1100s, the popes began to take charge of the canonization process and they developed a rigorous verification process. The lives of the prospective saint, saints were examined, the miracles were attested to by medical commissions, and when a firm uh, dossier was built up, then the Pope would review it, and he would then issue, if he were convinced of the sanctity and the uh, worthiness of this person to be elevated to the altars, the papal formula, I declare or define and pronounce that so-and-so is a saint and is to be venerated by the universal church. So the question is, what is the role of the process? Do we need a process? The popes seem to think so. Then you seem to think that we needed an historical investigation, we needed a scientific investigation to see if these were real miracles, so then the question becomes, if the process is obviously compromised for political reasons, 
or other reasons so that the miracles begin to look a little fishy. So, for example, with a lot of these recent saints, we say that we're told that it was a miracle, there's several of these canonizations, one of them Oscar Romero, it was a miracle that a problem pregnancy resulted in a normal delivery. <laughs> that, I've seen four, three or four examples at least of this. That's not a miracle. It happens every day in maternity wards. How many mothers have been told that children would be born defective? And the child was not born defective. Or there was a problem in the womb that corrected itself without any intervention of a, of a saint. So when you begin to see, see that there's a political process involved as well as an investigatory process, there's political pressure, and that so many so-called saints have been canonized, I'm not saying they're not saints, I'm saying questions arise. And the church has never declared de fide that the mere pronunciation of the formula by the Pope means that it's an act of the infallible magisterium. Because again, if, if it were that simple, why would the Pope need an investigation? He would just wait for an inspiration and say, I declare that you're a saint. He could point to you and say, you're a saint. Would that make you a saint? No, there needs, there needs to be study and there needs to be investigation. And when that process is corrupted, and you see more and more a saint factory is being erected, then you begin to wonder whether you can question it. And I don't say that it, they, these people are or aren't saints. I just say doubts, doubts have arisen. Uh, not many years ago, a formula or a way was worked out to be able to offer a 19, use the 1962 missile, say a mass of Paul VI, which the word in Congress doesn't really... <laughs> It. He destroyed this mass, and shall we now use the 62 missile to say a mass of him, not for him? He needs masses for his soul, why not? But not as he the, being the saint of the day. I think it's all just a reason to stay with the pre-55.